Today, we're talking about democratic engagement. Last year, UNCP was designated as a voter-friendly campus because of the efforts of the program UNCP Votes. It's Campus to Community. You're watching Campus to Community. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hannah Baggett Anderson, Lecturer of English and Literacy Commons Faculty Fellow. With me today to talk about democratic engagement and programming is Dalton Hoffer, Assistant Director for Student Engagement, and Harrison Pegram, a Senior Business Major and Founder of UNCP Votes. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Great. So to start off, um, Dalton, will you share a little bit about what you do on campus? Yeah, so basis. I'm the Assistant Director for Community and Civic Engagement. Um, so my main job is to get students out into the community and to be active and engaged citizens, um, whether that's through volunteering or through, um, you know, utilizing their rights as a citizen and voting. And oh, that's all what UNCP Votes is really all about. Um, so we do programming such as Days of Service. Um, we take tutors to elementary schools. Um, we do reading parties on campus, so any way that we can bring the campus and the community together is you know, what CC is all about. So that's kind of what I do. Um, and Harrison works for me um, mainly just to work on democratic engagement efforts. Mm -hmm. um, he's helped with you know pretty much any other program that we do in the office, but uh -huh. his focus is UNCP votes, um, and I think he has kind of developed a passion for it. Um, if I'm speaking for him, but yeah. yeah. Harrison, so since Dalton has set you up so well, uh, can you talk to us about like how you got interested in working with CCE and why your focus is democratic engagement? Well, I actually started working with CCE uh, my freshman year. I met Dalton Hoffer during my orientation. He was advertising for the Greek Life Table as well as Community and Civic Engagement Table at the time. I went up and spoke with him, uh, introduced myself, and was basically saying I didn't really know anyone in the area. I wanted to get involved and get engaged. Um, that following semester, so in January 2016, he gave me a call and was like, hey, we think we might have a spot for you. I started working and I was focused on mainly expanding our online volunteer community partnership uh, on UNCP Serve. But when 2016 election cycle came around, I kind of took a step back from that and then devoted my efforts more heavily on democratic engagement side of things. Could you all, um, either of you, talk to me about what democratic engagement actually means? We can make assumptions, but some students and maybe watchers of this show won't know what we're talking about. Right. So a lot of times when people hear democratic engagement, you automatically think of the parties and people automatically think that any type of democratic engagement is directed towards Democrats. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. We're talking about the democratic process mm -hmm. in which people have the right to vote as citizens. Um, so when we're talking about democratic engagement here at UNCP, we're talking about um, registering our students as voters, engaging them um, through educating them on why they should be voting, what are some issues that they might be passionate about or that might affect them as people, mm -hmm. um, and then mobilizing them, actually getting them to the polls to act out and actually vote. Um, and so those are the three main points that um, UNCP Votes has kind of been built on. Um, and we, we strive to increase democratic engagement through um, education programs, voter registration drives, um, and then doing what we can to mobilize students to actually go vote. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's kind of what we view democratic engagement as, um, but it's all about the democratic process and um, how you're utilizing your right as a citizen. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Great encompassing definition. Yeah, thanks. Um, so Harrison, we talk about you as founder of UNCP Votes. Um, did you come up with the name? Like, what does that mean that you are the founder of this program? Well, uh, I, it's pretty awesome. I'm very, very proud of UNCV Votes and the work that we have done and continue to do. Uh, I'm very excited, looking forward past 2018 to see what the future legacy of UNCV Votes has to hold. Mm -hmm. uh, the name really just came off of a spinoff of all the other UNC systems. Yeah. UNCW Votes. Uh, Western Carolina votes, all of them kind of have the same type of 
okay. name, so I just wanted to follow suit with that. Okay, I didn't know that. So this yeah. is kind of like a program that exists across the UNC systems? Well, yes and no. Programs do exist across the UNC system. Uh, a lot of us are tied in together through Campus Compact, uh, okay. as well as Campus Votes Project. Campus Votes Project has fellows on, I believe, 10 campuses in North Carolina. Uh -huh. So there's conferences for us every year to kind of meet up and talk about democratic engagement strategies, how to engage more uh, students on our campus, as well as just events and initiatives that we could host to maybe create that voting culture on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I had no idea that that existed, so that's, that's really cool to hear about. Yeah. When, when we hear or think about a culture, right, a culture that um, encourages people to vote, and particularly our students right here in Robeson County. What does that mean to you, a voting culture? Well, I think it kind of goes back to why UNCP Votes was created, right? Um, so when the 2016 elections hit, um, you know, everyone on campus kind of said, wow, we actually, we, we got to do something because this is a, a big election and there's a lot of issues and um, animosity across both parties and um, how can we, you know, educate our students. And so um, that's kind of one of the big reasons why we started UNCP Votes to um, do those things. Um, and so when we're talking about creating a culture of, of voting, we're talking about institutionalizing democratic engagement. Mm -hmm. So how are we as an institution at UNC Pembroke um, making sure that our students are educated enough to uh, register themselves in the area or community that they want to be registered in um, and trying to break the red tape for them. So uh, making sure that it's so easy for them to register. Uh, and one thing that I think we have done at UNCP is really try to develop processes and educating students on those processes on how they should be registering as UNCP students. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken us a little while to figure, figure some things out, but we've actually um, developed some processes in which, um, you know, a student that lives on campus they have to actually use their 911 address for the residence hall that they live in. Mm -hmm. um, and a student that lives in an apartment complex outside of campus, um, they have to show proof of residency if they go vote early mm -hmm. um, and register at the same time. But they don't get a bill. Um, they get like an online draft or you know what have you, and you can't use your lease. So mm -hmm. those students can actually go to the registrar and request an official letter um, to serve as proof of residence. Mm -hmm. um, so creating those processes and um, trying to make it easy for students to register, and then also um, not UNCP being UNCP votes being the only um, organization that are educating students on how to vote. Um, this year we've seen a lot more student organizations taking action and mm -hmm. educating students on topics that are um, most passionate to their specific area. Um, and so I think just encouraging those student organizations, encouraging other departments on campus to realize that democratic engagement isn't specific to just UNCP votes or CCE, that it's a community thing um, just as voting is a community thing. Um, so th to me, that's what it means to build a culture and um, just make it a thing. Oh yeah, I got to go vote this year or mm -hmm. I got to go vote um, because, you know, that's, that's what I'm that's supposed what to, to do. do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that that's what it means to, by creating a culture. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like hearing that. Um, you mentioned student organizations that help you um, with this and promoting like specific issues because I know at UNCP we're not necessarily promoting parties or candidates, mm -hmm. but we're asking students to focus in on issues. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have some examples you could share of student orgs that volunteer with you? Yeah, so in the past we've had um, Alpha Phi Alpha, aka um, the, some Greek life organizations that have kind of stepped up in a nonpartisan way to register students to vote mm -hmm. um, as far as educating people on topics. Um, Spectrum and AAUW have done a really great job talking about LGBTQ issues or issues related to women and um, why it's important for people to vote the way they vote for these certain topics. Mm -hmm. um, but UNCP vote, we, we always try to um, be as nonpartisan as we possibly can. Right. Um, so we like to talk about it issue based rather than partisan based. Um, so we'll talk about these issues, but we're going to lay everything out on the table for you. Mm -hmm. 
so students know going in to this to this ballot, which can be intimidating, right? So intimidating. Um, I mean, I I early voted, but I voted in um, Cumberland County, but I did take a student to early vote here in Robeson mm -hmm. County, and it gets confusing, and you have to sit down and read your ballot. Can mm -hmm. you talk about how do you prepare students to go in to make those voting choices? Well. We've been offering an early, sh uh, early uh, voting shuttle, mm -hmm. and on that early voting shuttle, we've been um, providing sample ballots as well as just literature on the actual amendments through some of our North Carolina-based nonpartisan partners. Right. Uh, with that as well, during all of our events, we try to have sample ballots as well as educational information like that available. Mm -hmm. We want to, if, if someone comes to one of our events, we want to give them all of the information necessary to make them educated and informed voters. So, like Dawn said earlier, we have a kind of a three-part uh, system we like to do. So, mm -hmm. registration, education, and then actual, actual voter mobilization on Election Day. Mm -hmm. So, when they come to register, we take care of that then, but then we also want them to leave with something. Whether it's links provided for information on ballot issues, um, or just the actual amendments themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this year there are six amendments on the back of the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a lot of times when people go to vote, they are just focused on, you know, I'm going to vote for this person, this person, this person. But mm -hmm. then they get to the back and they're like, oh man, what are these? Um, yeah. In the ballot, they don't leave a lot of room for a description. Um, so uh, we partner a lot with um, Campus Votes Project, um, Campus Election Engagement Project, and uh, North Carolina Campus um, Compact. And so all of these outside partners that are nonpartisan, um, they provide us with funding, they provide us with resources and materials that we can utilize to educate people on these, um, these topics and amendments and, and candidates. Um, so one thing that we've been pushing is this uh, guide for the amendments. Mm -hmm. So it lists all six amendments and um, tells you kind of what it does, what it doesn't do, and moves forward. Um, so it's very simple, it's laid out, easy to read. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we like to push those, those kind of resources that are nonpartisan, um, that come from one of our partnering uh, partners and um, we, we'll print them out, we'll email it, so. Yeah. Yep. And you've mentioned um, the, the group, Com you said Compact? Yeah, North Carolina okay. Campus Compact. Yeah, could you all talk about what that is? Because I haven't heard of that particular group. Yeah, so North Carolina Campus Compact basically is kind of um, a hub for uh, any university in the state of North Carolina, they can become a member of Campus Compact. Mm -hmm. So um, as an institution, we pay a membership fee to be a part of Campus Compact. Um, and it allows us to go to conferences, uh, student conferences. Um, there's a conference for faculty mm -hmm. um, called PACE. And, and um, it allows us a lot of different resources. Our AmeriCorps VISTAs come through um, North Carolina C Campus Compact. Um, so they are a huge resource for our office, mm -hmm. um, but it, it pretty much allows us to um, be engaged and be that connection with other campuses across the state. Mm -hmm. So we can come together and say, hey, these are some issues that our state is going through. What can we do to, to solve these problems? And so um, they've really played a big role in um, developing and pushing UNCP votes mm -hmm. um, through providing us funding and connecting us with those key partners that have allowed us to hire students like Harrison and Thomas um, because UNCP votes is a partnership between CCE and SGA. Okay. Um, and so we have two co-chairs, um, Harrison and Thomas, who serves on SGA. Um, and they both are fellows, so they both get paid through the Campus Votes Project and um, the Campus Election Engagement Project. Um, so it's, it's great to have these resources um, mm -hmm. that we wouldn't normally have if it wasn't for partners like Campus Compact. Yeah, and it's great to be able to pay our students, right, Harrison? Yeah. I'm sure you're happy about that. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, so today, too, to just shift our focus to today, which is Election Day right. um, and, the, and the midterms, right? What challenges or exciting things have you seen in encouraging people to vote in the midterms? Because that's usually a time where people don't show up, right? right. Yeah, so um, and we, we get data from you know, national data, but then we also get data that are specific to UNC Pembroke. Mm -hmm. um, so our data shows that 
there was roughly 64% of our student population registered to vote in the 2014 election. Okay. And 30% of those students that were registered voted um, on voting day in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at the presidential election, our students are more likely to vote during early voting. Mm -hmm. um, but during midterms, they always vote on election day. Oh. So today is really important for us because we're in a midterm election and we're expecting most of our students to vote today. Uh -huh. um, though we, we pushed a lot through early voting, we actually had 47 students take the, the poll to go vote with us uh -huh. last week. Um, so yeah, I think today is really important because we're expecting all of our students to actually go vote today. Mm -hmm. So. That's so exciting. Yeah. Harrison, how are you feeling about today? Well, uh, I've been waiting for it to come for a couple months now, it feels like. But I'm very excited, very optimistic that we're going to have huge voter turnouts among students. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of students uh, really step up and have a voice this election cycle, which was different um, in the 2016 election period. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're going to see pretty, pretty good numbers at the polls today. Yeah. Yeah, and I know nationally um, it, it's said that there's a larger turnout than there has ever been right. amongst younger voters, which is really excellent. And I think that it's programs like UNCP Votes that are helping the, that number, mm -hmm. um, which is so important um, because the only way to change the future is to actually take action and do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but one thing I am concerned with uh, and a little worried about today, talking about setbacks, would be the change in uh, our polling location from the CIS Academy right. down the road to the Pembroke Rural Fire Department. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, with the added road construction and you know probably pretty rainy weather today, I'm kind of hoping that doesn't deter people from going to the polls. But we'll have a party bus and a shuttle ready to go at yeah. the UC. So, talk to us about this party bus that's going to be at the UC today. Well, uh, starting at 2 to 6, we're going to be having a party to the polls in the Hawk's Nest and in the UC Mall area. So we have contracted with Big Boy's Kitchen. Doughboy's. Doughboy's Doe yeah. Boy's Kitchen, I apologize, <laughs> to come. Um, originally, he was bringing a pizza truck out when we had it outside. Um, but just because of the rain, we decided to go ahead and push it inside. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's still bringing wings, subs, a lot of stuff to get students' attention. Mm -hmm. We're going to have you know, the proper nonpartisan information available for them so they can they need to get educated anymore, if uh, they haven't researched any of the amendments or any of the candidates, mm -hmm. they'll have an opportunity to do that there. As well as talking to people uh, like myself who can answer any questions they have about the election, about election days, uh, any questions they may have about voting and the process itself. We just really want students to be comfortable going to the polls because it's kind of you know, going to a doctor's office for the first time as an yeah. adult. It's just like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm here, but who's holding my hand now and helping me through this process? Well, we're trying to, as UNCB votes, be that uh, guide for them and help them uh -huh. with their first time voting or third, whatever it may be. Yeah. So I love that metaphor because it does feel like going to the doctor for the first time alone or yeah. doing anything alone. Um, it's really intimidating. But yeah. but then, you know, the student that that I took Carter to go um, vote last week in early voting because he had to change his uh, registration was like that was anticlimactic. Um, after he had gone through the process because we do hype it up to prepare them, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to take your time, make the proper choices. But um, there's not a ton of fanfare, right? But we're trying to bring that fanfare through the party, right? Yeah, uh, one partner that we have worked with this year um, is called uh, North Carolina Vote Together. Uh -huh. And so they're all about um, bringing your friends together, bringing everybody that you know, your family, um, whoever, your neighbors, um, come together and vote together. So if you, you make it a party or a celebration, it's more fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where Party Through the Polls kind of came from, um, with that partnership. Uh, they actually gave us some funding to, you know, contract with the boys and, and provide food uh, for anyone that comes out and says, hey, I voted today, or, um, you know, I'm excited about voting. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited to have that partnership and to build that culture again um, and making voting a celebration mm -hmm. and um, making people excited about wanting to make an impact through uh, utilizing their voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so party to the polls though, it's, it's fun and exciting. Um, in the past, we've done several different events. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so when we started in 2016, one thing we really started to push was um, some 
forums. So we did a forum like on why people should vote. I think um, we did a forum on the North Dakota pipeline because... Right, and I think we have a picture yeah. of that, um, of that particular forum, if we can get that up. Uh, yeah, so here. there we were in the, the museum on campus and um, we were able to educate people on why the pipeline was so important. Um, and they focused on the Atlantic Coast pipeline mm -hmm. um, because it stops right here in Pembroke, North Carolina. And so that was a really big topic for that election. Mm -hmm. um, and we talk about voter registration, education, and mobilization. So our first year we did a march to the polls. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, I remember I was, you there. Yeah, we I was there, and that's something I wanted to bring up, too. We have a picture of that, of the march to the polls. Yeah. Here it is here. Um, because one exciting thing about where our polling location used to be is that we could walk to it as a campus. Um, but now, Harrison, as you suggested, like a challenge that we might have yeah. is that it's a, is it a little farther than walking distance? Yeah, and it's not really safe to walk right now because of all the construction. Mm -hmm. um, but... I, um, I don't know what will happen in the future, but my guess is that it will move back to the, the location, mm -hmm. um, mainly just because it, it moved because of the hurricane and okay. damage to the building. Um, so that it was nice that it was on campus and it was easy access. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's why we're doing this push to um, provide a shuttle during those times for students to um, make it a little more easy for them to go vote. Yeah. Um, and fun because they're with people that they know. But these kind of programs, um, I hope, show that UNCP is dedicated to our students' future and our community's future um, because they're investing in us, right? They're mm -hmm. investing in these programs that Harrison and Thomas have really built. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we're establishing a culture because um, we've done popcorn and politics you know, every semester since 2016, uh -huh. where we bring candidates on campus and students are actually able to interact with them and educate themselves on, you know, who these people are and make a, or you can kind of see a face to a name. Yeah. Um, which is important when you're going to go vote. Yes. Um, and students have such a big voice, especially in our small little town, yeah. right? Um, the town election, you know, is usually won by like slim margins. Mm -hmm. um, so if students take action and vote, you know, who knows what could happen. Um, and so we're really excited that, you know, we've, we're in the process of developing that culture through this program. Yeah, and every, especially in Robeson County and, and super local near our university, every vote does count mm -hmm. when you're talking about those slim margins. And that's what excites me that now students and you you all have worked so hard to educate them that they can register in this county where they live at least for these four solid years if not longer for some mm -hmm. students um, and maybe some that stay that they can have an impact on where they are living mm -hmm. right rather than voting at home yeah you talk to them about that yeah exactly in you know robinson county i think we have about a 55 percent um voter or voter rate okay. um so it's you know, not as high as we would like to see it because we are the largest as far as landmass county in the state. Um, but I think our students have the ability to to make that change. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a really strong and powerful voice. They just have to utilize it. Yeah. Yeah. And then Harrison, when you're talking about, you mentioned kind of looking forward to the future um, past this particular, particular election. Um, Anything in the works? Anything in, in the plans? Well, um, I definitely don't want to talk too much about next semester, mainly because, to be honest, I haven't figured it out yet. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, mainly for me, what I'm going to be focusing on next semester is just detailing an outline plan for whoever's next, mm -hmm. whoever to take the reins after me. Um, just because I, I want to see UNC votes continue on campus. I want it to be nonpartisan. It was from day one. I want it to finish that way. Uh -huh. um, I would like to see us eventually, UNC Votes, eventually become kind of the parent organization for student organizations on campus. So I'm hoping to see such an increase in engagement from students that we will be at a point in time where we can kind of facilitate uh, voter and democratic engagement uh, with those student orgs. So for example, this year we had a few outside bodies request to come onto campus and register people to vote. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't really see, there's no problem with that. They're definitely free to do that, but we want to make sure they're doing it right. So earlier Dalton was mentioning the 911 addresses. Well, we find a lot of people who come on campus to register 
just put one university drive for every single student across right. the board, which is just not the case at all. Uh -huh. You know, if you live at Cyprus, your address is 62 Braves Drive. If you live at Pine Hall, it's completely different. So. Uh, We've just been trying to make sure that people who are trying to help spread the same goals as us and have the same goals and objectives of us are doing it the right way mm -hmm. and following the proper process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like hearing that because that's actually feedback I heard from the people working at the polls um, during early, early voting here in this county was not all students can live at one university <laughs> drive, right? And that they were, because I think in the past they were accepting that, but now it's been adjusted. Yeah, so Board of Elections, they would actually go in and change the address to the 911 address mm -hmm. um, if the residence hall was listed. Um, but now they've kind of stopped that, um, which I understand because it makes it a lot easier for them because um, it's a lot more extra work when they have to do that for, mm -hmm. you know, 500, 600, you know, students. Right. Um, so we, we've taken the liberty to put it on every clipboard that we possibly have. Um, when we send out an email about voter registration, we include that information on there. Uh -huh. We have it on our website. Um, so if, if students are going to go register, um, they have the proper you know, address to utilize. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as far as you know, establishing a culture, we would, you know, we'd obviously love to see um, somewhere along the line developing some sort of process that when a student first gets here um, you know are you registered to vote this is how you can register to vote when they leave the university we provide them with another voter registration uh, card or form with information on you know this is why you should change your registration to where you're going to next what's, mm -hmm. what's next for you um, and I think that that would encourage them to be engaged in whatever community that they land Mm -hmm. um, so if we're engaging our students here and now and in this community, um, we're fostering their commitment in the future, yeah. um, and, which is amazing, you know. Uh, I think that that's what we're all about here at UNCP. Yeah, yeah. I love hearing that. So with our final moments together, um, most exciting part of this election day for you or what students should be aware of today in preparing to vote? Yeah, I think um, be educated on the amendments and be excited bring a friend and vote with other people don't just go by yourself mm -hmm. this is our right this is a uh, power for us this is the way we exercise our rights so please grab a friend today come to party of the polls if you want to grab the sh you know ride the shuttle out there but just make sure you vote at the end of the day that's the most important thing to s is to vote today yeah and we will celebrate that so yeah. thank you both of you for being yeah, here to you. talk to me today um this is Dalton Hoffer and Harrison Pegram. And thank you to our viewers for joining us here on Campus to Community. We'll continue to talk to service learning faculty and students this semester. I'm Hannah Baggett-Anderson. See you next time.